Welcome back to our series on virtues and vices. We're going through the seven deadly sins. Today, our topic is greed. Greed, or vice, as it's commonly called, is a desire for more. Not only more money, more things, but also more status, more power. Just a desire to have more than one has, or especially that one needs. When Satan takes Jesus up high on the mountaintop and offers him and shows him the kingdoms of the world and says, all this can be yours if you bow down and worship me. In a sense, he is trying to appeal to that human sense for more, that human sense for greed, that human sense to be recognized, to to be great. But Christ rejects that offer. Christ understands that this is a trap. Satan often tries to tempt us by this same message. He tries to get us to seek his will rather than God's will. And it might not even be to bow down and worship him, but in a sense to just simply seek our self-interest, which is in essence worshiping Satan rather than God because we're against God's will. And if we're against God's will, we're doing what Satan wants for our life. Now, it's very important to recognize that the desire for greed is very closely aligned with the God-given desire to achieve and provide, to work hard, to bring about blessing for ourselves and our family. Uh, there are verses which speak against right that life which does not uh, work hard, which does not bring about uh, fruitfulness from one's labor. But greed is crossing that line to say, I need a little more, I need a little more. I once met a gambler who told me, you know what the secret of Vegas making money is? And I said, what's that? The percentages, right? They're stacked in their, their favor. He said, no, that, that's a few percentage points in most games. It's greed. You see, they know you're greedy. And they know when you win $10, you're going to say to yourself, I could win 20 And when you win 20 they they know you're going to say, I can win 40 so on and so forth. They know that you will never stop. You will keep trying to win more because if you won once, you can win again. So whatever you lose, you're going to put back in the house. So I don't want to advocate in any way for smarter or unsmarter ways of gambling. I think that it should be shunned as a whole. But the premise here is that this man understood is that they were on to something in human nature, something that made them more successful than they should be. You know, it's not 100 to 1 odds in their favor, and yet they're multimillionaires, multi-billionaires in this industry. And we all can fall into the trap of justifying what we're doing as you know providing for our family trying to just just get ahead maybe i want to give more to the lord so the question to ask yourself how much are you giving to the lord now how much are you putting away for your family now how much are you looking at the things you buy and do and say you know this is what i need not what i want and when it comes to social status Are we content where we're at? Or are we constantly seeking the need to be validated? All of these things strike at our sense of greed. And in a sense, one could ask, how is this different than pride? They almost go hand in hand, and they do. In fact, pride is kind of the core of these sins. And when we don't get our pride in check, greed will quickly follow. But it's important to remember that any desire for greater, for more, beyond what we need, is often greed. So how do we know if we're being greedy or if we're just working hard? How do we know to, where to draw that line? Well, I'd say this, if you wanna fight greed in your own life, the easiest way to fight against this is giving. When you give, it really strips that intrinsic nature of greed because that does not come natural to us. We always find ways that we could justify to keep what we have, to get ahead a little more so that we can give more in the future. But no, don't do that, give now. Secondly, I would say, Make an internal mindset to say, I do not care the perspective that people have of me, of the car I drive, the house I have, the self-worth based off the goods I have. Don't let that define you. Don't allow people to pressure you to be something more than you are. Get what you need, live comfortably, whether that's a big car, small car, big house, small house. Allow your true needs to affect that which you buy and want. And 
thirdly, I'd say this, think and pray about any major thing that you buy and purchase, maybe even little things. Because oftentimes those little things can be our biggest expenses that we justify to try to bring some self-worth to ourselves, clothes, jewelry, just some things of that nature. So pray about those decisions and don't let, again, the culture define what you should or shouldn't be and should and shouldn't have.